be really quiet too, Nick. Oh well, yeah, you're you're already on oh, right okay. now. Hey, uh, Nick Collier here, YouTubers. Uh, we've got another little dinky project here for a Metro guy. Uh, you've heard about him before. We're going to actually take this drive shaft, cut it in half, and make it shorter. Yes. Shorter. And uh, and then put a sleeve on it and weld the sleeve. Pretty simple, pretty quick job, no big deal. Uh, but we're going to film it, so uh, stick with us. All right, so we've got ourselves a sleeve here. We're going to just punch a hole in it, no big deal. We're moving along with this piece. Actually, what happened is yesterday, uh, I the bore didn't come out right, so we have to start again. So I've got, I brought us back to the place where we left off, and uh, and uh, basically we're going to go in and bore out the hole, and then come back in and uh, and finish the the surface treatment. So uh, stick with us. Uh, we're going to be boring some holes today. So since this hole is so tight, I mean, I've got probably 10 or 15 thousandths on each side of the, uh, of the boring bar itself. And you can see uh, I, yesterday we hit a bunch of galling because it was so close. Um, I need to make sure that this, this uh, boring bar is absolutely parallel with the, uh, with the hole itself. Now, one way I can do it is to line it up to the to the uh, edge of the uh, bed of the lathe. Or the other way I can do it is just to leave it a little bit loose and just run it down and see if it makes it. Yeah, it makes it. Tighten up my, uh, my uh, head and we're ready to rock and roll. Now, uh, I noticed that the the original drill bit that went through here was off just a little bit, so hopefully I have enough room to uh, to true that up. Let's see what we can come up with. All right, well, we cut the shaft in half, and that was quite an effort. I mean, literally, it must have taken 20 minutes to get through that thing, and my blade never goes crooked, and look at that. That, just, that thing just took off and went south on me. But, you know, we got an inch or two to cut out of that, and then we're going to put this on the shaft and splice the shaft together with this sleeve. Now, the thing is, is that we're very close and I, you know, I haven't taken my measurements because everything's still pretty hot, and so um, I think we're, I think we're close enough that we're going to be able to just slide it in. There, worst comes to worst, there's um, some pretty rough uh, tooling marks on here that I might be able to just throw it on the lathe and just file them down a little bit. And uh, and let's see, can you see the tooling marks? Yeah, pretty pretty coarse. So I'm just take it down a little bit and just get it to slide in. A little better but probably just freeze these and heat this and these babies will slide right in but that's a project for tomorrow for now lunch time well, good morning nick collier here and uh, it's a mid-march chilly morning not as cold as it's been but still a little chilly um and we're continuing with this uh uh, adapting a crank or a, a drive shaft pulley or not pulley but sleeve and it's going to go on this side of the drive shaft and on um, this side of the drive shaft now this side almost fits and um, and I thought about it over the weekend and I thought okay maybe it's uh, maybe I can just come in and ream this out a little bit of course 
you know, who knows what size this is. I'm absolutely sure it's not a standard size, but it just so turns out that I have some adapt or some uh, adjustable reamers. In fact, a whole set of them. So I get to use my adjustable reamers for the second or third time. Let's turn around. We'll, we'll look at the box and uh, and then see how we can play with it. Okay, this. adjustable reamer set 101. I went to a garage sale and uh, it was a, a, a machinist had uh, had passed and uh, his relatives were selling off all of his equipment. And I got this entire set for like, I can't remember, it was 25 bucks or 30 bucks, something like that. So we have pretty much every size that we can deal with all the way up to, what is that, about an inch and a half or something like that. So uh, let's get that reamer. Let's find, or let's get the uh, sleeve. Let's find out which reamer is actually going to fit in here. And it looks like that one might be the number. And we'll take this over to the vise and... Uh, an adjustable reamer is pretty easy tool to use. If you haven't used it before, you just bring this screw down and tighten this screw up a little bit, or the nut. And, uh, and what it does is it runs the uh, reamer blades up the shaft, and the shaft actually is bigger on this end than it is on this end. So you just keep bringing it up until you uh, start to hit or start to bind on the hole. And it looks like we might not actually make it. So we might go to the next size. All right, maybe I went the wrong way. <laughs> Typical for me. We go up the shaft rather than down the shaft. We're getting there. That's not going to be big enough. Almost, though. Let's take this next size and bring it down as far as we can get it. There we go. Almost there. Just a little bit bigger. quarter of a turn there it is now we're starting to bind so now uh, get a crescent wrench and start uh, turning or we could use a t-bar all right that was just a little bit too easy can't remember which side is the cutting side. Yep, that's the cutting side. All right, so now we're starting to actually trim this. Just take it about a quarter of a turn per, per attempt, and that seems to catch it just about right. And we need to get a little cutting fluid.
Okay, I think we're getting close enough that we need to take a measurement. So let's get out the um, snap gauges. All right. And we're sitting at eight seventy eight. And the size of our shaft is eight eighty two. So we need to, we need to take two or three more thousandths out of that. And that shouldn't be a problem. Almost 79. And what was our cap size? It was 82. So I think we're just about perfect. Yeah, I think we're going to do just fine right there. We've got a nice, good, clean shaft at this point. We'll uh, run a rag through there and clean it out. Okay, no. so now what we need to do is we need to take two inches off of this uh, because he wants it two inches so short. Want two inch plus sixty thousandths. Yes. Plus sixty. And that pretty much will go right from that edge there. So that's what we need to cut off. And you know, I sawed this in my uh, bandsaw the other day, and oh, my God, this stuff was so hard. So I think what I'm going to do is just uh, put it in the cutoff saw, the metal cutoff saw, and whack this off, and then grind it clean again and go from there. Because the bandsaw just wiped out that blade. All right, I'll be back. I'm going to grind the heck out of this. Okay, so he wanted me to put a couple little rosettes in there uh, to penetrate into the shaft and make sure the shaft stays in place. So that was no problem. We're going to come back in and weld everything up because we're in our preheat mode and I'm thinking, yeah, we're a little bit above 200. Oh no, 400. So uh, let's let it cool just a little bit more. And then we'll just take off and uh, go ahead and weld these two passes around this, this perimeter. And I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and, and uh, rotate it as I go. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. Now, because, we, uh, because there's a possibility the shaft will warp or torque a little bit, um, we're going to uh, do one, pat, one short pass here, one short pass here, rotate it 180, do a couple little shorts there and a couple little shorts there, and then come back in and do a final, a full bead. But for the moment, let's uh, weld up those rosettes, and let's see how, how we're doing temp-wise. Ah! 
Yeah, good penetration. I think we got some. Except for that one little knob right there that I'm going to grind off and read well, everything looks pretty good. Not bad. Now what we need to do is take it over. Once it's cool, we're going to take it over and test it and see how it rotates. And if it has warped one way or the other, then uh, we need to do some heat treating to, to get it to straighten out. But uh, that uh, and everything seems to be good over here. So that uh, that's going to happen in an hour or two and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, let's look. Let's have a look at this shaft and see how straight it is. Um, what I've done is I brought you up within what is that? About an eighth of an inch of the edge of the uh, of the mill of one of the slots of the mill. Now we're gonna and I've magnetized all of my uh, pieces of material that's holding that in place. And now we're just gonna spin this very gently and see if we end up with any kind of variation and it looks like everything's pulled in pretty straight I would say so I mean if we're out we're out by ten thousandths or so well, I'm looking at it now, and there seems to be a little bit more out. Yeah, I'd say we're out by 30. Okay, so so what we have to do is we have to come in and just heat one side of the shaft to get it to pull over. And uh, we'll do that after everything cools off and gets back to normal. All right, so uh, we'll be back. Okay, so we're uh, we're got her locked down. And yet we can still spin and we're sitting on a couple of V blocks and uh, so and, and I've heated it three or four times uh, kind of bring it in fairly close let's see how close I've gotten at this time so we're still at about eight thousandths because he wants this thing pretty much right on the money and I believe There's our high point right there. So we'll slide our, our indicator over and we're just gonna blast that right there with some heat. Enough, as much heat as we can come up with. Should pull us in just a little bit of a blast just enough to heat that up and expand that material and bring that back in so that we're more even 
and as you can see over here and up in here I've done that three or four times to kind of bring it in each time getting closer let's drop this on over here out of the way of the heat and just just quickly look at it okay it's doing it again for some reason so it worked I don't know what the heck's going on something loosened up oh that's what loosened up it came off the end ha. all right so now we're sitting at oh four thousandths maybe five and I can pretty much live with that I think that's gonna do what we need to do and um, and uh, it's going to give him a nice tight um, rotation so we've got a, uh, our shaft welded and we've got it in place and we're running nice and true and that's all we need so that's a you know little short project uh, and Hey, this is Nick Collier signing out.